get ready to step back in time to the era of robber barons, when the ruthless titans of industry clawed their way to the top of American business with cunning and cutthroat tactics. And at the top of this pyramid of power stood Cornelius Vanderbilt, a wealthy man who earned the title of the Commodore. Cornelius Vanderbilt was a true American icon, whose legacy still echoes throughout the halls of power and the boardrooms of corporations today. He was the epitome of the American dream, a self-made man who built his empire from the ground up, and whose fortune made him one of the richest men in history. But behind the facade of success and wealth lay a dark and brutal truth about the lengths he was willing to go to achieve his goals. In today's video, we will delve into the life and times of Cornelius Vanderbilt, exploring his rise to power, his cutthroat business tactics, and the legacy he left behind. But to ensure that you don't miss out on more great content like this, please take a moment to like and subscribe to Discovering Hub. Also, click on the notification bell. Without much delay, let's dive into the video. Cornelius Vanderbilt was born in Staten Island in 1794, the son of a struggling farmer. As a young boy, he showed a remarkable aptitude for business and entrepreneurship, selling apples and candles on the streets of New York City to earn a few extra dollars. Despite his lack of formal education, Vanderbilt was a shrewd businessman from a young age, and his natural talents would prove to be the foundation of his success. At the age of 16, Vanderbilt began working for a local ferry operator, where he quickly learned the in and outs of the transportation industry. He soon began running his own ferry service, using his profits to purchase additional boats and expand his business. By the time he was in his early 20s, Vanderbilt had become one of the most successful ferry operators in the region, with a fleet of over 100 vessels and a reputation for reliability and efficiency. Cornelius Vanderbilt's personal life was as dynamic as his business career. He was married twice and had 13 children. His first marriage was to his cousin, Sophia Johnson, with whom he had four children. After Sophia's death, Vanderbilt married Frank Armstrong Crawford, with whom he had nine children. Vanderbilt was a devoted father and was known to provide well for his children. He also made sure that his children received a good education and prepared them to take over his business empire after his passing. In terms of personality, Vanderbilt was known to be a fierce and ruthless businessman. He was known for his sharp wit, quick temper, and ability to negotiate hard bargains. He was also fiercely independent and refused to allow anyone to intimidate him. Despite his tough exterior, Vanderbilt was known to be a caring and generous person to those close to him. He was also a loyal friend and would often provide financial assistance to those in need. Outside of business and family, Vanderbilt had a keen interest in art and collected many paintings and sculptures during his lifetime. He also enjoyed horse racing and owned several thoroughbred horses. Cornelius Vanderbilt's rise to power began in the early 1800s, during the height of the Industrial Revolution. Even though he started out in the ferry business, shuttling passengers, and goods across New York Harbor, he was always looking for bigger and better things and soon set his sights on the booming steamship industry, purchasing his first steamship, the North River, in 1829. It was in the steamship business that Vanderbilt first demonstrated his talent for aggressive business tactics, including undercutting prices and engaging in cutthroat competition with his rivals. With his typical drive and determination, Vanderbilt soon became a leading figure in the steamship industry, dominating trade routes along the East Coast and earning a reputation as a formidable competitor. But it was Vanderbilt's entry into the railroad industry that truly propelled him to the top of the business world. He quickly realized that railroads were the future of transportation, and he set out to acquire as many key rail lines as possible. His aggressive tactics, which included manipulating stock prices and intimidating his competitors, earned him a fearsome reputation and made him one of the wealthiest men in the country. Vanderbilt's acquisition of the New York and Harlem Railroad was a major turning point in his career, giving him control over one of the most important rail lines in the country. With his vast wealth and power, Vanderbilt soon became a force to be reckoned with in American business and politics. He was known for his extravagant lifestyle, which included yachts, mansions, and a private railway car that he used to travel the country. 
But he was also a philanthropist, using his vast fortune to fund the creation of Vanderbilt University and to support other charitable causes. Despite his controversial reputation, there is no denying the impact that Cornelius Vanderbilt had on American business and transportation, and his legacy continues to be felt to this day. Vanderbilt's rise to power also brought him into conflict with other business moguls of the time, including Jay Gould and Daniel Drew. These rivalries often played out in public, with the media eagerly reporting on the latest developments in the railroad wars. Vanderbilt was not above using his power to intimidate his opponents, and he was known to employ spies and other underhanded tactics to gain an advantage. Despite his controversial business practices, Vanderbilt had a lasting impact on American capitalism. He was one of the first industrialists to realize the potential of vertical integration, in which a single company controls all aspects of a particular industry. This approach allowed him to maximize profits and cut out competition, and it set the stage for the monopolies and conglomerates that dominate the business world today. Vanderbilt's business tactics were legendary, and many of them were less than ethical. One of his most infamous tactics was manipulating stock prices to his advantage. He would spread rumors about his competitors to make their stocks drop in value, then swoop in and buy them up at a bargain price. This allowed him to gain control of entire companies and rail lines for a fraction of their true value. He was also known for using intimidation to keep competitors in line, and many feared crossing him. One story tells of how he once threatened to throw a man out a window when he refused to sell his business to Vanderbilt. But Vanderbilt's tactics weren't limited to his competitors. He was also willing to exploit his workers to make a profit. He was notorious for paying his employees low wages and working them long hours, with little regard for their safety or well-being. One of his most famous quotes is, the public be damned, which he reportedly said in response to criticism of his high railroad rates. This disregard for the public and his workers earned him a reputation as a heartless capitalist. Another controversy that Vanderbilt was involved in was political. He was known for supporting political candidates who would further his business interests, and he would often use his wealth and influence to lobby for favorable policies. Vanderbilt's close ties to politicians, and his use of bribery and intimidation tactics to get what he wanted made him a polarizing figure in American politics. When it came to philanthropy, Cornelius Vanderbilt was no slouch. He was passionate about giving back to society and spent a significant portion of his wealth on charitable causes. One of his most notable philanthropic endeavors was the establishment of Vanderbilt University in Nashville, Tennessee. Initially founded as a medical school, the university has since grown to become a leading institution in education and research. Vanderbilt's contribution to the university was significant, and his legacy lives on to this day through the institution's continued success. Beyond his support for education, Vanderbilt was also known for his charitable donations to a variety of causes. He was particularly focused on helping those who were disadvantaged and his donations to organizations that supported the poor and the homeless were widely recognized. Vanderbilt's philanthropy was also characterized by his willingness to give anonymously. He was known to make significant donations without seeking any recognition, preferring to do good for the sake of doing good. Cornelius Vanderbilt's net worth at the time of his death in 1877 was estimated to be around $100 million. Adjusted for inflation, this would be equivalent to several billion dollars in today's currency. Vanderbilt's wealth was accumulated through his successful ventures in the steamship and railroad industries, and he was known for being one of the wealthiest and most powerful businessmen in America during his lifetime. What do you think of our video? Let us know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, tell your friends about it and hit the like button. Also, share with friends on Facebook, WhatsApp, and Twitter.